Christine Persichetti, a former Hamas leader, is making a call that is being heard around the world tonight. He's demanding jihad on Friday, asking for the Muslim world to join the fight against Israel. Here's part of his message. Tribes of Jordan, sons of Jordan, brothers and sisters of Jordan, this is a moment of truth and the borders are close to you. You all know your responsibility. To all scholars who teach jihad and who preach for fighters and martyrs, to all who teach and learn, this is a moment for the application so words are not just words. While some are preparing to go out and simply support Palestine, others are scared the day will result in bloodshed. The NYPD says they are aware of that call, but at this moment, they say there is no direct threat to New York City. Still, they are being cautious. Police are deploying more officers around the city, especially at gatherings and houses of worship. Schools across the city, including some Catholic academies in the Diocese of Brooklyn, are choosing to go remote Friday. Be sure to call your your local school for more information. Meantime, the White House says starting Friday, the U.S. will provide charter flights for Americans trying to evacuate Israel. At least 27 Americans have been killed in the Hamas attacks. Others are missing. On Thursday, prayers going out for all who are suffering. A prayer for peace began the day's discussions at the Synod on Synodality in Rome. Everyone's thoughts on the Holy Land as the war between Israel and Hamas rages on. Israeli Defense Force howitzers fired a barrage of artillery into Gaza on this sixth day of fighting. Israel says the Gaza siege will not be lifted until the hostages taken by Hamas are returned home. <laughs> Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in Israel. During a visit to a donation site, he had an emotional meeting with a 24-year-old survivor of the music festival massacre where Hamas killed hundreds. We were saved by miracle, but there are friends that we love that Blinken reiterated the U.S.'s support and likened Hamas's crimes to those of ISIS. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also made the comparison. Hamas is ISIS, and just as ISIS was crushed, so too will Hamas be crushed. The U.S. is helping by supplying ammunition and other defense material to Israel. What we've seen... I think uh, will be very hard to erase from our minds uh, and certainly uh, our hearts. But I sense a fierce determination in Israel to prevail and prevail Israel will. Here to talk more about the Catholic response to this terror in the Holy Land is the national correspondent for the Tablet and Crux, John Lavenberg. Hi, John. Hi, Christine. So, John, all over the world, Catholics have been calling for peace in the Holy Land. That includes the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops who say, quote, may all who love the Holy Land seek to bring about among all the parties engaged in the fighting a cessation of violence, respect for civilian populations, and the release of hostages. How are the bishops helping? Yeah, so today the bishops really doubled down on that call for prayer and emphasized also and added that they want Catholics to partake in a day of fasting, abstinence, and prayer on October 17th for Jerusalem. And that echoes a call of Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizabala, the Latin Patriarch of Jerusalem. And he also said he encourages Catholics to participate in Eucharistic adoration and their own prayer and recitation of the rosary in the coming days as well. As you know, plenty of people of faith pilgrimage to the Holy Land all the time. So have you heard any updates about the people who might be there now? The biggest thing for the people that are there now is finding safety. Mm -hmm. I know that means some people are sheltering in schools and parishes there looking for safety, but also some, like the University of Notre Dame, for example, have announced that all of their students, students studying abroad in Jerusalem have been relocated to other international campuses. So it's really just finding safety, whether in Israel or if they can relocate to another country. Okay, and really quickly, what have clergy there said about the situation? Yeah, so more sa along those same lines, it's really just looking for safety. Uh, Pizabala said that there are people sheltering in the local Catholic parish in the school, hoping, hoping that that will be a safe place. But he also said he, this could be a very long war. So right now it's just that immediate hope for safety and prayers that this could come, will come to an end soon. All right, John Lavenberg, National Correspondent for the Tablet and Crux. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Christine. And as the terror in the Holy Land continues, be sure to stick with Currents News and the Tablet for full coverage of the conflict. 
In the United States, religious identity for those raised Catholic is ever changing. But for people from Latin and Hispanic cultures, faith remains a constant. This Hispanic Heritage Month, we're diving into how Hispanics are able to pass their faith down through their culture to new generations. And as Currency News' Jessica Easthope reports, the two go hand in hand. So they would have been his 84th birthday. Diego Oviedo says it's a privilege to honor his late father, Jose. This was the way the cross in Jerusalem. His um, admiration of Jose's devotion to his family and church has recently reached new heights. Next year, Diego is hoping to become a permanent deacon, just like his dad. He never pushed me to be a deacon. He never said anything like that. The way he did things, I didn't see myself being able to do that. There are currently 206 permanent deacons in the Diocese of Brooklyn. 94 are Hispanic. And nationally, the roots of faith among Latin and Hispanic cultures run deep. According to a Pew Research Center survey from earlier this year, Latinos are about twice as likely as other American adults to identify as Catholic. Uh, the other brother that's also in the program to be a deacon. A foundation that started during childhood for Diego and his eight siblings. His brother, Jose, is also on the road to the permanent diaconate in North Carolina. The joy my father uh, always had, it was God, that um, is his presence in, uh, in, in his heart. Jose took his role as a father seriously. He taught his sons to lean on their faith, especially during hard times. 2013, he, he had a stroke. He couldn't speak the way he, he used to. Uh, he didn't even remember our, our names. He, he, he didn't even remember us, but he loved us. For Diego and Jose, church and culture have always been one and the same. And though their father is not the reason they're pursuing the permanent diaconate, he's their inspiration. They feel serving is in their blood. I told my wife, you know, there's something else that uh, God wanted me to do. As Diego and Jose look to pass faith down to their children, they remember how it was passed down to them. We, we've been bringing it down from generation to generation. He, he brought it down to us and, and we took it from him and that's what I'm trying to do with my kids. And why preservation of faith can often mean a connection to the places they've left behind and the lessons they'll never forget. In Ozone Park, Jessica Easthope, Currents News. That is this Cards News Update. I'm Christine Persichetti. Thank you for joining us because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.